This is our third session on the five solas of the Protestant Reformation, and we're focusing on Christ alone. In our first session, we talked about why these five solas are needed because of the wrath of God that rests upon us as sinners and because of our our deadness spiritually inside in our rebellion and lifelessness toward spiritual things and towards God himself. In the second session, we focused on grace alone, and now we focus on Christ alone. And what we're arguing is that this deadness problem is solved by our being made alive spiritually, and this wrath problem is solved by God's becoming 100% for us in Christ. And how does that that work of regeneration here and and that work of justification here and propitiation, how does that come about? How can we enjoy life forever and God being for us forever? And we're arguing that the biblical answer that the Reformers found in the Bible was that it happens by grace alone, and in this session we're focusing on it happening by or on the basis of Christ alone, received through faith alone, so that all things lead ultimately to the glory of God alone, with Scripture alone as the only final authority in these for these for teaching these truths scripture alone so father as we focus on your son and how you uniquely provided him as the foundation of our new life and as the foundation of our being made right with you so that you could in a holy and just way become for us and not against us in wrath Grant us to understand the word and to embrace the truth and to savor Christ as our supreme treasure above everything. I ask in his name. Amen. Let's let's look at a few passages where the reformers saw these things. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Christ entered once for all, into the holy places, he's talking about heaven now, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. So, in shedding his own blood at Calvary, in the death of Christ, Christ did something once for all that produces an eternal redemption. So this is just huge. In this one momentary act, something so magnificent was transacted between him and his father on behalf of the children that would believe. It can be said that once for all, He has done it, and when it is done, it is done eternally. And the stress here is simply, there is no later later additions to Christ as the foundation for this redemption. It is Christ alone. Nothing is going to be added forever. Once for all, it is done It was sufficient. His blood is of infinite value, and therefore his redemption is of eternal and infinite duration. And it has happened once for all, never to be added to, never to be repeated. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. I do not nullify the grace of God, How does he not nullify the grace of God? For if righteousness, if the righteousness we need 
to be right with God, if the righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. In other words, if law-keeping in my life adds something to the righteousness that I need for God to be 100% for me, for God to be turned from, from wrath to favor, if, if I add some law-keeping to what Christ has done when he died, then his death is useless. Don't you think that's, a, that's, a, that's an amazing conclusion to draw? Can I just add like 1%? Can I just add 1% law-keeping? in order to have my little part in my righteousness that brings about the change from wrath to favor? And the answer is, if you add law, if you add 1%, he does nothing. Now, this is one of the clearest ways of saying Christ alone. Christ alone is this righteousness, because if you add anything, then you take away him entirely. Now, here's an illustration of that later in Galatians chapter 5. I said 1%. Here's where I'm getting that idea. If you accept circumcision, some of the people were saying you've got to be circumcised to provide the kind of righteousness that will turn God from being wrathful to being your your friend forever, 100%. If you accept circumcision, if you go that route and add, just add circumcision, that little bit of law keeping to Christ, Christ will be of zero advantage to you. It's, it is all of Christ, all on Christ or none I testify again to every man who, who accepts circumcision that he is obliged to keep the whole law. If you want to go the route of law-keeping, you can't add a tiny little bit to Christ and expect to be honoring Christ's cross. You want to go the law-keeping route, you go all the way. You must keep every single law if law-keeping is going to be the way you get right with God. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by, by the law. You have fallen away from grace. So I'll say it again. Both of these texts, 221 and 5-2, 5-2 show Christ alone as the foundation of our righteousness, not Christ plus anything that we can do by way of law-keeping or that anybody else can do or that Mary can do. Christ is the issue here, 100% Christ. Christ totally and Christ alone. 2 Corinthians 5.21 comes at it another way. For our sake, God made him, Christ, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He bears our sin, and we bear his righteousness. Our sin is counted as Christ's sin, and his righteousness is counted as our righteousness, and his righteousness is the very righteousness of God. This is Christ alone. His righteousness is ours, and his is the righteousness of God, and you can't improve upon your standing in him when the righteousness of God has become yours, and it becomes yours because of your union with him. Don't add anything to Christ 
alone as the foundation of your righteousness. And here it is even more clear on this issue of righteousness and justification. This is Romans 5, 17 to 19. If because of one man's trespass, that's Adam, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness, so those who receive the, the free gift of righteousness, which is owing to an abundance of grace, much more will they reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. One man, Christ alone, gets clearer. Verse 18, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness, I think that's the summary of Christ's life and death, treated as one, the one act of righteousness climaxing in the death of Christ leads to justification in life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, the many were made sinners by the one man's obedience, like this one act of righteousness, the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous, which is a way of saying Christ alone is, and his obedience is the one and only foundation for being made or counted, appointed, the word made is appointed righteous before God. It's, it's the singularity, the one man, the one man, the singularity of Christ that's being stressed here. There isn't Christ plus anybody else, just like there wasn't Adam plus anybody else that brought the race into ruin, and therefore the new race, the new humanity, which is meant by this all men here. Just as the first humanity fell in Adam, the new humanity, all of them in Christ, are counted righteous, appointed righteous, because of one man's obedience and his alone. One more passage. There is therefore now no condemnation, Romans 8, 3, 8, 1 to 3. There is therefore no condemnation. Oh, the sweetness of these words. Let it sink in. You go to bed, get up in the morning, say this to yourself. No condemnation, no condemnation, no wrath, no judgment, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? How did that come about? How does this glorious news that the, that the Reformers discovered that you can have a free conscience, you can live in absolute freedom from fear of God's wrath and, and judgment and condemnation. Answer, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. How? Why? What, what, what happened to set me free for this? For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. The law could never do this. By the use of the law, we could never come into a state of no condemnation because we are sinners. So what the law could not do, weakened by the flesh, God did. How? By sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Whose flesh? Christ's. Whose sin? Mine. And yours, if you trust in him. Therefore, the great lesson here is that the no condemnation that the Reformation discovered and exulted in is achieved right here by the sending of the Son 
in the flesh like a human being and for sin so that by his one act of death he might condemn sin in the flesh and he alone achieves that no condemnation. You can't add anything to the perfect execution of the Son of God on behalf of every one of your sins. Therefore, the Christian gospel includes this truth. Christ alone, his blood, righteousness, resurrection, life, is the only basis on which God's justice is satisfied and he becomes, God becomes 100% for us in Christ forever. There is no addition that can be made to this solitary basis of Christ alone. Oh, that our praise and thanks may rise forever for the gospel of the glory of Christ.